Okay, so we have defined Grobner bases. We know how to construct them. But so far, uh, we did not talk about uniqueness properties of a Grobner basis. So what we're going to do is that we're going to join an adjective to a Grobner basis and then show that with this adjective, we have something unique. So let's remember monomial ideals very briefly, and we will have to use them quite a bit. So we had some pictures to represent monomial ideals where we essentially compute the multi-degrees of the monomials inside of an ideal, and that gave us a shape. For example, in two dimensions, we could plot a picture like this. And such a set would be, for example, the multi-degrees of elements in appearing in an ideal. And with such a thing, we said that for the monomial ideal, we only had to keep track of these corners these corners gave us exponent vectors, and the corresponding monomials would generate the monomial ideal, and well, these corners are unique, so that we have a unique minimal basis for a monomial ideal. So we're going to do the same thing for a Grobner basis. A Grobner basis, let's say g1 through ga, is minimal if the leading terms, or the leading monomials if you want, is a minimal basis for the ideal of leading terms. Now we know since we've started with a Grobner basis, we know that these leading terms will generate the ideal of leading terms. And then the minimality condition is just the following. So our Grobner basis will be a minimal basis if and only if the leading terms do not divide one another. Okay, so the, we're saying that if, when we compute the multi-degrees, we get the corners. That's what we're saying. So let's recall the following properties. Minimal basis for a monomial ideal is unique. So by definition, it's clear that we're allowed to scale a minimal basis, we're allowed to permute them, so the uniqueness has to be up to these operations. But in particular, this implies that the number of elements in a minimal basis is fixed. It's the number of corners in such a picture. So the number of elements in a minimal Grobner basis is well defined, so it depends only on i. So well defined, it depends on the ideal, and of course it depends on the monomial ordering, which I fixed once and for all while I'm talking about these things. So it's easy to fix the problem regarding scaling. We can also insist that both our minimal basis has coefficients 1, or the leading terms of our Grobner basis have leading coefficients 1, but we also have to realize that there are many ways to combine Grobner bases without changing their leading coefficients. So we have to fix this problem, and then we will find something that's the analog of a minimal basis in this generality. So a Grobner basis, let's say G1 through GA, is reduced if the following condition holds. First of all, the leading coefficient of GI should be 1, so that deals with the scaling problem. And second, no term of GI is inside the ideal generated by the leading terms of the other GJs. So we will show now that such a reduced basis exists and it is unique. Ah, before we continue, let's make the following observation that previously when we were defining minimality, this minimality condition was equivalent to the sa statement that the leading term of gi was not inside of this ideal generated by the leading term of all the other gjs. So what we are saying is now stronger. I'm saying no term of gi should be contained in there. So that's the strengthening from minimal to reduced. And in particular, reducedness clearly implies minimality. So we want to show that every ideal in a polynomial ring admits a reduced Grobner basis. So let G, GA be a minimal Grobner basis for some ideal i. Now, we know how to construct a Grobner basis, we know how they exist, and given a Grobner basis, we just throw away elements with a redundant leading term. So we know how to get a minimal Grobner basis, that's easy. So now we're going to reduce these elements as follows. 
Now for each i, I'm going to take the element gi, and I'm going to form the sequence g, but without the gi, so I'm going to omit this element. And I'm going to reduce the gi with reg regards to the other polynomials. So this gives me a remainder. So this is the remainder for this polynomial division. And I'm going to assign this remainder to hi. And now I claim that h1 through hA is a reduced Grubner basis. So one thing is clear that there's no way I've changed the leading term of gi. So the leading term of gi was not contained in the ideal of leading terms from the other gj's. Therefore, the leading term of gi is the same as the leading term of hi. Therefore, the leading terms of hi generate the ideal of leading terms of i. So it's a Grubner basis, and reducedness just comes from the properties of the division algorithm. So while we're performing this division, especially while we're using a Grubner basis, we see that no monomial uh, that remains will be divisible by the leading terms of g minus gi's. So a picture can be very useful here. Let's draw what, what's happening. Okay, so I've drawn a two-dimensional image of a ideal of leading terms, and let's mark one of the multi-degrees corresponding to a Grobner basis element, let's say gi, and I'm going to use the glex ordering. Now, if I'm using the glex monomial ordering, what's going to happen is that if this is the leading exponent of gi, then I can, I need to draw a line, straight line like this, and then draw a line with a 45 degree angle. Now every exponent vector that appears inside of this shape can uh, appear as a polynomial, as a, appear as a term in GI. So for every lattice point here, for each of these lattice elements here, uh, there could be a monomial inside of GI uh, with a non-zero coefficient. So we say that the gi is supported here, right? And I chose my glex ordering so I could decide on the picture. So for a different ordering, the picture would be slightly different. And what we are saying is the following. For every term that appears in gi with these monomials intersecting the blue region, I can kill them away using other gj's. I can set these coefficients to be zero by subtracting sufficiently many gj's from gi. And then the new hi will be supported only in the complement of the blue region and the remaining red region plus this leading term here. So let's be a little bit more clear about where the new reduced polynomial hi will be supported in. When we are doing our reduction process, we subtract gi from the remaining basis. What we are doing is that we end up removing this square. So when I rem remove gi, all the monomials I get will live inside of this green region now. So I get everything here. Right, so th since gi defined a corner, corner, when I re remove this corner element, I'm just removing a square. And regardless of your ordering, then the new hi will be supported first in the appropriate red region minus the green region. So in particular, this explains why hi still has this uh, leading term of gi, for example. Let's now prove the crucial property of being a reduced Grubner basis, and that is the uniqueness part of it. So from an ideal, we can always attain a unique reduced Grubner basis. So let's take two reduced Grubner bases. We know that the leading terms correspond to a minimal monomial basis for the ideal of leading terms. So the leading terms of gi's and hi's match after reordering. So we can assume so we can assume the indices match, right? So the leading term of gi equals the leading term of hi. Remember the leading coefficients are 1, so if the exponent vectors match, then the leading terms match. So what we want to show is that gi equals hi. So what we can do is consider the reduction hi minus gi reduced by polynomial division with respect to g. But this thing is zero because, first of all, g is a Grobner basis and clearly gi minus hi is in the ideal. And the Grobner basis has this property, its reduction will be zero. On the other hand, 
When I subtract HI and GI from one another, I will have that multi-degree of HI minus GI will be strictly less than the multi-degree of GI since I cancelled the le leading term. But no other term in HI GI uh, can be represented by the leading terms of the remaining uh, Grubner basis elements. So no term of HI minus GI is divisible by these leading terms. So the case for j equals i has been set already. So even the leading term of hi minus gi is smaller than the leading term of gi. So there's no question of divisibility here. As for the remainder, well, half of the question is easy. So gi was reduced already. So of course, it, uh, no term belongs to the ideal generated by the leading term of gj's. But then you realize that the same condition holds for hi. When you look at the ideal generated by h minus hi and g minus gi, they must be the same because uh, we had the same shape representing the monomial ideal. We've removed the same corner and then uh, there is now a remaining shape. Well, this shape is independent of what kind of Grubner basis you are choosing. It was just about removing the same corner. It will give us the corresponding monomial ideal and they will be the same. So hi also cannot be divisible by the leading terms of gj's. Uh, that means when I computed this reduction, I could not have done anything. I did not change the polynomial. So the original polynomial was equal to its reduction. And that, of course, was 0. And that's it. This is true for every i. Therefore, hi is equal to gi's. So a small note here. Uh, we can also make the ordering unique. Since we already have a monomial ordering, we can just say uh, that order, we should order the Grubner basis elements uh, according to descending leading terms. Okay, so now this establishes that each polynomial ideal has a unique ordered Grubner basis with these con conventions. So a simple but nice result is the following, that if you take two polynomial ideals, the, these two polynomial ideals are equal if and only if their reduced Grubner bases are equal. So this is a slight strengthening of the ideal membership theorem. Of course, we could have used ideal membership on generating set of J and then on a generating set of I, but this is cleaner. So we compute reduced Grubner basis and then check whether they are equal or not. Now at this point it would be a very good exercise to do the following. Take an ideal generated by linear polynomials. So these linear polynomials will be of the following form. There will be sum of a constant time xj. So the degree is 1 for each term. And show that computing the reduced Grubner basis corresponds to computing the uh, re row reduced echelon matrix for these coefficients. Right, so I formed the coefficient matrix Cij's, uh, however many i's and however many j's that I have here. So and I compute the row reduced matrix and this will give me the reduced Grubner basis and vice versa. This explains that what we are doing with reduced Grubner basis is a generalization of row reduction to polynomials of higher degree. All right, this concludes our lecture for today. And next up, we're going to study polynomial systems using Grubner basis, and we'll get a feel for uh, what a kind of versatile tool a Grubner basis can be. See you at the next lecture.